Good morning, everyone. I'm Don Dixon. I want to welcome you to another edition of our master class. Today, we're really entering into this discussion on reading contour maps, and and we talked in our last uh, discussion about the importance of getting as much information before we get out here on this lake. Get as much information as we can before we launch our boat, and we term that little procedure general interpretation, general mapping and interpretation. And one of the best aids that we have in this process is contour map. Now, back when I started with Buck Perry years and years and years ago, he made me study topo maps, topographical maps. Uh, and, you know, it involves the sea level and the, the, the topographical uh, uh, areas and try to read what was going to be taking place once this area was flooded and became a reservoir. Well, I can tell you, after reading topo maps, <laughs> it drove me crazy. I told Buck, I said, this is not for me, man. You know, if it's that intricate, because they're very, very difficult to read, you really have to scrutinize them. It's painful. <laughs> so, what I discovered later on, after learning some of those lessons from Buck, that there was something called a contour map. Way better. So way easier to read where the depths are involved we're already talking about what exists underneath the water and i realized from buck the importance of getting this information that's really available on contour maps before we get out there on the water i have in my camera gal to take a picture of this lake right here this is lake eustace it's part of the harris chain here uh, in central florida and this particular lake is about 8,000 acres, 7,500, 8,000 acres. And I've said it many times before, I'm going to say it again as we begin this study. It's only a fraction of that water out there that is productive, that actually is a good fishing area. Only a fraction. And if we actually put a number on that fraction, it'd be about two or 300 acres out of 8,000 acres is productive water that you and I want to be fishing. So how in the world are we going to be able to eliminate all of that unproductive water in the quickest amount of time? Well, if we just had to go out there and launch our boat and do it all out there on the water, it would take quite, quite a while. Uh, it would take way longer than we'd, we'd like to admit. However, with contour maps today, we can cut that time down by 95% and get all of these answers that I referred to the last time we talked, I, we can get all those answers, or at least a good portion of those answers, on a good contour map. Now, back in the early days with Buck, and as I was traveling around the country, uh, I knew what, a, what an aid it was to get a contour map of a new lake I was going to be fishing, many times taking writers fishing or, or taking uh, tackle people fishing. Uh, uh, it was important in my business, it was important to fill the halls that we'd catch fish on these lakes that I'd never seen before. So, good news was that fish are fish, water's water, and 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 they don't change. Not whether you're in Minnesota or Florida, wherever you are, fish and bass is still a bass. So, I knew all of that, but so many of the lakes and the reservoirs that I was fishing, they were large, they were huge. This is only 8,000 acres out here. But I have to pin it down and get to those three or four hundred acres at the max where all the fish are. So, back in those days, it was hard sometimes to find a good contour map of each one of these lakes that I was fishing. Sometimes I'd have to drive for hours, a different town, I'd have to go two, three towns away to find a, to find a contour map. But it was worth it because it gave me so many answers and I know that everybody that's been following uh, these vlogs, these videos that we're shooting, they want these answers. How can you end up taking a contour map and being able to eliminate 95% of that water? I'm going to teach you how to do that. Uh, and it came out the other day while I was talking to a close friend of mine, 
He said, you, uh, you know, now that there is such a thing called Navionics, and there's some other services that have the same uh, end result, where you can uh, buy this app and be able to call up any and all of the lakes in this country of any significance, and they give you instantly, you have a contour map right in front of you on your iPad or on your computer. It's a beautiful thing. Back in the old days, that wasn't available. But man, today, what an aid. And it's right there at your fingertips. So the question this guy was asking me the other day was, why in the world don't more and more fishermen use it? Why don't they use contour maps to help eliminate and get to the spots where the fish are? And I said that pretty simple. Because the average fisherman today has no idea how to read a contour map, much less interpret what he's reading. And it's really pretty easy to understand the reason for that. Is they're not grounded in the basic movements of the fish. They don't understand how uh, fish move about in the lake both daily and seasonally. They don't understand uh, uh, to a full effect how fish use bottom features in these movements. So how in the world could they garner anything from these contour maps? To most, to the average fisherman, it's just a, a map with a bunch of lines on it. Doesn't mean anything to them. Some, some fishermen will, will carry a contour map of their lake, but they don't really use it, mainly because they don't know how. So we're going to try to clear that up in our study. We're going to teach you how to read a contour map properly and allow it to be the huge help that it is once you learn how to read it and then interpret it. Now, as we begin this, I want to start by saying that a contour map really has three components that can help us eliminate all that water out there, the unproductive stuff. Those components are as follows. It shows where all of the deep water and the channels are. Those channels, I mean the main river channel uh, in, in man-made reservoirs and side feeder stream cuts, the channels of the side feeder streams. And in a natural lake, all of the deep holes that exist. It shows it on your contour map. Two, it shows structure. It shows bottom features on that lake that's different in some respect from the surrounding bottom areas. This is what we refer to as structure. We did a whole study on it. So now we know it shows deep water. It shows structure. And probably the most important thing that I can teach you this morning is the third component, which is a break line. Now, just as a little quick review, a break line is where we have a sudden increase in depth. It can be a decrease, but mainly we're thinking in terms of a sudden increase in depth that runs for a distance. It's breaking off, and that break off runs for a distance. We refer to that as a break line. Now, break lines show up on a contour map. One of the most important things that you're ever going to hear me say reading break lines on a contour map. And I'm going to discuss that in detail with you. But before we do that, I want to walk you through one little exercise that's going to be important to you in your learning of everything we're going to be talking about in mapping interpretation. So if this is a repeat for most of you, that's okay. Stay with me for a little bit. We'll get started. But for those of you who don't know, I want to refresh a little bit. So I'm showing you this diagram, and it's an area of a shoreline where we have a bar. Now, it's not much of a bar, a little bar coming out, but it's, it's just this is just for a teaching moment here. So bear with me. And I've drawn in the contour lines around this little bar. And they're in five-foot contours, as you can see. So we have a contour line five feet, then one at 10 feet, and then at 15 feet, there's a contour line that is real close to dropping into the 20 feet. And where those two lines come closer together, that denotes that we have a break taking place, a quicker break, uh, what we talked about before, a break line that runs around this bar at a depth of 15 feet. And then as you uh, get into that 20 foot, and you go out a little ways further, and then all of a sudden, as you can see, it breaks into the river channel, which swings in and just touches, kisses that end of that bar right there. Now, 
Here's the reason for this little exercise. Everything we see from this point on, when we're studying these maps and learning how to read a contour map, and even when we work in our detail once we get out on the lake, we're going to be seeing everything. You and I are going to be seeing everything from a top view. We're looking straight down on what's there. But, Buck always says, and he taught me this early on, and he made sure that he was quizzing me on a regular basis. <laughs> We'd see something from the top side, and he'd ask me if I can visually see that from a side view. What we're looking at here, but see it as a side view. Now, I'm going to throw up this other picture that shows a side view of what we just saw from a top view. And here's the point of this exercise. No matter what you and I see from this day forward as a top view picture, we have to think about how the fish see it. In order to do that, we have to mentally convert what we're seeing from a top view to a side view. In that way, we'll be able to know precisely how we need to fish it. So in just in this little sort of exercise I'm showing you here. Where would we expect to catch the fish? Look at that. We'll look at the second diagram here. We'd expect to catch a few fish maybe up there at the bush at 10 or 12 feet, whatever that is. Occasionally we catch fish there. We catch fish at the 15 foot break line and we'd also be fishing and catching fish at times at the drop off at 25 feet. So those are the spots we'd be fishing. But you may not have seen that looking at the top view. But if we can mentally convert that to a side view, it's easy to see what it looks like, actually what it looks like down there, and more importantly, how we can interpret it and then how we fish it. So from this moment on, everything we talk about with all of the structures and everything we're looking at on the contour map, we're looking top view. Buck says you must develop that mental capacity of converting that top view into a side view. Whether you draw it, whether you write it down or not, it's unimportant. You have to be able to see it in your mind. And he said that'll be your best teacher when it comes to mapping, and more importantly, to interpretation. So, with all that being said, let's get started. I said when looking at a contour map, there's three things that it's going to show. It's going to show deep water and channels. It's going to show us structure. Bottom conditions different from the surrounding bottom area. Our job is to find out which ones will produce and which ones won't. What's going to help us with that is the third thing that it shows, brake lines. Now we know what a brake line is. We're all clear. It's a line on structure that runs for a distance where we have a sudden, a rather sudden increase in depth. Now, all that being said, we're going to get started. We're going to talk about taking our first look at a contour map. What's important? First, we want to find some deep water and all other things being equal. We would prefer to see on any map that we're looking at, we would prefer to see around 30 35 feet. We'd like to see that much water. But as we just talked about recently, me living here in Florida, we don't always have 30 35 feet. In fact, in Florida, we hardly ever have that much depth. Uh, if you don't have 30 five feet of water in your channel or your deep hole. Keep in mind, the fish will take the deepest water available, and that's where all of the migration of the fish is going to begin. It's going to start from, and this is how we have to think now, we're interpreting, general interpretation. Our movements and migrations will begin from the deepest water available to the fish in your lake. All right. All that being said, so we got this deep water thing out of the way. Now, next, what are we really looking for on that contour map? Well, we're looking for structure, that's for sure. In our last video, remember, we talked about all structure won't produce fish. You can have structure and no fish. We're looking for the structure that does have fish. So the whole point is, as we look at these maps, you can have a lot of structure in the lake that will never have fish. So... How are we going to determine a good structure from one that's not so good? Well, there's a bunch of things, but the main guide for you is going to be this, and it's the third component, brake lines. 
We are looking for brake lines on a map. On a contour map, I'm looking for brake lines. I see a bunch of structure, but where are my brake lines? If I have no brake lines, I'm not interested. I'm looking for that clue. That's really going to be the thing that puts me in touch with the productive areas. Brake lines, where we have a sudden increase in depth. Now, how deep should that brake line be that interests me? As I'm studying that map, I can have a brake line, let's say I have one at 10 feet. Am I really excited? Not much. Why? As you know from studying with me, being with me over the last few months, we don't get too many movements of the school of fish to a depth of 10 feet. I'll notice the one at 10 feet, but I really start getting interested. Buck always said from 12 to 20 feet. That's where I'm interested. I want to find some brake lines between 12 and 20 feet on the map now. Keep in mind, we're not doing detail work. We're doing general mapping. So the idea is, when you're looking at these contour maps, how many answers can I get? And what's the keys? What am I looking for? I'm looking for what it shows me. Deep water channels, structure, and most importantly, brake lines. There's one other thing I want to uh, alert you to. Let's put it that way. And it's extremely important when studying your contour maps. A brake line, we said, is where we have a break, an increase in depth, that runs for a distance. You all got that definition. But sometimes, let me throw up this diagram, sometimes we have a brake line occurring, but just in one spot. It doesn't run for a distance. Now, Buck doesn't refer to this as a brake line. It's just occurring in one little spot. He refers to that as a break. And correctly so, it's just a break. It's not a break line, doesn't run for a distance. And where we have that one little spot, we further define it as a sharper break. In one spot on a structure, when you have those contour lines come real close together and then fan back out again, right at that spot, sharper break. I'll tell you how important it is. First time I ran across a sharper break with Buck, he said, Don, don't ever forget this. He said, fish see a break line as a change in light. They're down here, put, the, put yourself down there in deep water. Put a scuba tank on, get down there 30, 35 feet. It's dark. There's not very little light. Most all light's gone. And if there's a drop off, 15 feet, you look up, you can see a distinct light change. And keep in mind this, fish take in five times more light in their eyes as we do. So if you see that beautiful change in light, how do you think the fish see it? That's the reason they're so important. Fish see it and they move right to it and then they move along it. The break line. Now, he said, don't ever forget this. When that break line occurs in just one spot, I referred to that as a sharper break. And he said, that is like a neon sign up there just flashing. Just flashing. Bing, 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 bing. Saying, hey, fishy, here I am. Come here. Here's your spot. Here I am. And fish move right to that spot every time. It is such a critically important spot to look for. When you see that on your contour map, you put a circle on that and go. And let me remind you of two times that I've talked to you about in the past. One, recently, Danny Carpenter, we saw this sharper break. On the contour map, we saw not only a good-looking bar where the side cut went right in and touched the tip of that bar, but there was a sharper break occurring right there. I circled out and said, we need to go out and fish that spot right there. So there was a case where the contour map gave us the exact spot. Sure enough, when we went out there and went around there with a depth sounder, we saw the sharper break. We anchored down the boat, and you know the rest of the story. About 100 fish, period. The musky tournament, Palm de Terre, where do we catch the fish? Everybody say, well, you're up there 35 feet fishing with wire and seven, 800 spoon plugs. Uh, yeah, but what were we fishing? We were fishing a sharper break. That's where all four of those fish came from, a sharper break. So as we're looking at these contour maps and we're looking for those break lines, anytime you see that break line that only occurs in one little spot, sharper break, 
on structure, that's your money spot. So we're going to talk about more about it the next time we get together. And we're also going to be giving you a few little quizzes. I'm going to put you to the test. Make Get your mind working. Because in the end, even though it seems relatively simple to me, it didn't seem simple back in the beginning when I started with Buck. It takes a little bit of concentration. takes a little bit of, Buck used to say, elbow grease. Got to go to work a little bit. And But more importantly, we got to put our minds to work. But we need to take advantage of what they're giving us. Buck gave us the answers, and now Navionics has given us a map of every lake in this country. <laughs> the rest is up to you and I to get really good at reading those maps, interpreting those maps. And then once we get on the water, that's a whole different discussion, how we're going to get to details. Because I said the three things that you can see on a contour map, there's a bunch of things we can't see. We can't see the little fingers. We can't see the clean spots. We can't see the stumps, the rock piles, the, the bushes, the little patches of weeds. We can't see uh, uh, those little things that we refer to as breaks. They're not on a contour map. We're going to determine those features once we're on the water. And that's going to be a whole other discussion. But at least today, we've got to start. And that's how I want to leave you today because I don't want to throw too much at you at one time. Because this area of study is so important. I want to make sure you get it all right. Okay, so I hope you learned a little something today. And I want you to be sure to follow us on Instagram now. And like us on Facebook. And be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We we'll appreciate you guys. And we'll see you the next time.